Hold on. Are you still there? Mm -hmm. Oh, I think it's on. <laughs> Hold on. This is what always happens. Woo! Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm here with Jeff Moaning, and he is a loan officer with CMG Financial. So did I get it right? Yes, you did. Okay, awesome. So clearly I'm a little slow getting to Facebook Live today, but um, we're super excited to be here with him. Uh, I met Jeff through our nanny, actually Maddie, so maybe you'll watch this. Um, hi, Maddie and Jake, um, who uh, used him when we helped her buy them buy their first home. So Jeff has been really great with our clients. Um, one of my really good friends, Jennifer, you know, she was my go-to loan officer for many years, and she since has um, not been in the industry for a number of years. And so Jeff, I would say, um, has a, sim a similar style as far as communication and follow through and just kind of doing what he says when he says, and that's really important to us and our clients. Um, so we're excited to interview him in just a couple of minutes. I did want to talk to our friends and clients on Facebook just a little bit about the market right now. You may have seen the news, you know, story about the house that had 122 offers in Citrus Heights and the agent is actually in our office. Um, and so the market is crazy. So um, if you are thinking of selling, it is a great time to sell um, kind of unexpected appreciation. It's just been crazy and in a good way for sellers. It has been a little bit more challenging for buyers. And so we're going to talk a little bit about strategies for how to um, create a winning offer in this market. Um, if you have any real estate questions, we'd be happy to help you answer them or feel free in the um, comment section, you can put comments and we can try to answer those questions at the very end um, or later on if you post after we're done with this. But um, so um, Jeff, just talk to me a little bit about interest rates because I know we had a client ask the other day, you know, they have increased. So months ago they were in the twos and now we're seeing they're in the low threes so can you tell me about a little bit about that shift and nobody has a crystal ball but where you see rates going in the next you know couple months or yeah absolutely um you look at like back in january uh, to me that was where they were kind of the lowest you know mid twos and everything and here we are now a few months down the road and looking you're down low threes and people are probably wondering, well, well, why, what happened there? And I would say there's a lot of different factors that have kind of come into play on that. Um, obviously, elections are over, new administrations in now. Um, there's hope on the economy, recovering, things like that. Uh, with, you know, the pandemic and having vaccinations out and available, you're seeing hope to where the economy is going to recover. And I think that's a driving force that's help, helping raise those interest rates. Now, will they stay that way or not? It's like you said, we don't have the crystal ball. Um, but if they continue moving forward, I, I think the economy will continue to recover and you'll see an increase in rates. Now, me personally, I think you probably not a huge uh, increasing in the rates, but you're going to see something that will definitely be higher than where we are now and maybe in the mid threes going forward. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And that does change purchasing power, right? For people that could afford more of a home, maybe now they can afford a little bit less of a home because rates have, have climbed a little. Um, okay. And then tell us a little bit about just down payment assistance and what that looks like and kind of the different programs that are available for people who maybe don't have 20% saved or don't have 10% or even 5% saved, like what programs are available for them? Sure. And that's a, a common misconception that everybody needs that 20%, 10%, or like you said, even 5% down to get into a home. And in reality, there are down payment assistance programs that are out there, uh, especially in the state of California that, you know, can give you up to six and a half percent to go towards your down payment closing costs. So if you were doing a loan that maybe only required a three and a half percent down, you're going to have a little bit of money that's going to cover that plus give you a little bit towards your closing costs. Um, and, you know, if you happen to be you know, frontline worker or in the medical field or even, you know, in the education, there's some that actually have a down payment assistance that is an absolute grant for you, meaning that, you know, you can get up to 5% of your down payment closing costs and it's completely forgiven. There are others out there where, you know, one is it's an assistance, but it goes on as a second and third lien on your title. 
it's there until you sell your home or refinance or a change in title happens and then, then that's required to be paid back. Uh, there's another one there that um, if you aren't a frontline frontline worker or um, in the education department or healthcare or something like that, then um, after three years, it's forgiven. So a lot of different opportunities for clients out there that think, you know, maybe I just don't have enough money, but maybe you've got five, ten thousand dollars saved up or something. Well, that can definitely help. And now you have the opportunity to have the that amount, your, your down payment covered, most of your closing costs covered, and you're getting into a home for relatively little cost. Got it. Yeah, that's an awesome program to be able to take advantage of. So thanks for sharing that. Can we step back a little bit just into um, the rates talk? So what would you say today with like somebody with really good credit? What would you say rates are today for both a um, owner occupied property and then an investment property? Typically, uh, what I'm seeing today is excellent A paper credit. You're looking at in the low threes. And um, obviously, when you go investment property, it's a different breed, um, things like that. So there's a little more risk involved. So you're usually seeing about a half a point um, or maybe a little bit more to the rate um, to get that investment property. Okay. And for investment properties, people can put down 20 or 25% and at 25%, they get a little bit of a break on the rate or are you seeing, is that what you're seeing? Yeah. If you're going to put a little bit more down, you're going to have less adjustment to your rate and everything. You can get in as little as 20% down, but um, yeah, if you go 25, you're obviously going to get a little bit better. Okay. Awesome. And then as far as, so our buyers know who are working with us, but also those that are probably out shopping and um, might be from out of the area. Um, it's hard to get into escrow right now as a buyer, because when you're competing with 13 offers or 122 offers, you really have to make your offer stand out. There's different things we do on our end as the, you know, your agent to help you with that. What can they do on the loan side to make sure that when we present the offer to that listing agent that they are, you know, that they stand out and that the listing agent really highly considers their offer because they do need a loan and they can't pay cash like some of these other buyers. How can they strengthen their offer or just make it look really good in your opinion? Yeah, I think um, right now where I'm seeing success is um, a lot of people will just give you um, maybe a pre-qualification letter or something like that. Uh, where we are having success is actually having the client submit all their documentation and submitting that into underwriting to get an actual pre-approval underwritten um, loan minus your property appraisal and title. But um, being able to have that in hand and then put that out so when the client can go and put their offer in, it lets the seller know that, hey, they are already underwritten approved for this loan. We just now need a few items. And what that does is it actually speeds up the process of the time. So instead of saying, well, we need a 30-day escrow or maybe we've got to go to a 45-day escrow, you're coming in and you could be pretty strong at maybe at a 21 day escrow. Now that puts you a little bit, if it's some a seller that wants to get out sooner or lock in, gives you a little bit more of that advantage. Um, and, 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 you know, on the other part, you talked about things you do. And I, I would say, obviously, teaming up with a great team, um, a real estate agent that has great experience in this type of market, uh, being able to pull, I, I, I put it on there, you know, kind of tug at the seller's heartstrings with the the buyer coming in really really helps and you know working obviously with a, a loan officer and a company that understands the purchase market and pushes that to be at the forefront to make sure that that is the number one thing that's going to get done to make sure that escrows are hit on time and, and you don't have any delays absolutely because sometimes the highest offer is not always the best offer if they can't perform or their lender isn't getting back to the agent. So as when we list properties, we do, you know, look out for that. Who's responding? Are they underwritten? And I think that's the big key too, is you can close. And if they have got, done the full underwritten approval, you can close, right? Like in today's market, could you do a three week close if somebody had done all that? Or how, what is your closing time frame if somebody did do the underwriting process already? Yeah, if they've done the underwriting process, then it's just a matter of you know, getting your appraisal in and um, the title and 
and and then getting it back that information back in. So definitely under the 21 day time frame. And uh, if you're if you're starting out and you and you didn't get that aspect of it, um, then you know we're we're still looking at we're at a 30 day close to be able to make sure that we hit that 30 day escrow floor. Nice. And then some people think that pre qualification is a pre approval, but when we see offers come across our desk as a list, you know as we are listing properties, we immediately will see that and say, oh, that means they haven't reviewed the documentation. So when we're looking at 10 or 15 offers or the listings of the house that we're making an offer on for our buyers is looking at 10 or 15 offers, that's just a way to kind of sometimes weed people out if they haven't done the pre-approval. So it's super important that when you get pre-approved that you do the full pre-approval, that you get all the documentation to the lender so there's no hiccups, you know, when your offer is accepted or after you have, you know, you're in escrow and then there's these issues because your lender maybe hasn't looked at your documentation. So it's super important so that you're, as a buyer, you're not disappointed you know, in the middle of escrow. Um, so got to make sure to get that pre-approval. And then um, we even said too, with sometimes it can be challenging in this market to get like down payment assistance accepted or sometimes VA because as sellers, they're looking and saying, well, if I have a cash offer or if I have 20% down, you know, FHA and VA are kind of down here or down payment assistance because sometimes it can take longer. I know we've had success in pairing those buyers maybe with brand new homes. We've been able to do that because they're, you know, they are a little, I would say less, maybe they don't have 15 offers on that one new build. They do have some long interest lists, but every builder is a little different. So that's been helpful. What else would you say for the down payment assistance? And we were talking before we went live would help people in that, you know, with that type of loan get accepted. I think, like you said, um, we've gone that route where had a client that was just constantly getting outbid or just wasn't getting looked at. And so switch gears and went over to a new build with it. And um, myself personally, I actually talked to uh, the agent there and just let them know kind of what the program was, the guidelines where we were at and honestly our closing process and, and that it wouldn't affect anything on, on their timelines that they were at. And that, that really helped by switching over to a new build. Uh, some other things that we've done just to help clients maybe get a little more competitive is look at all different types of lending out there. I mean, the different types of loans, whether it be maybe VA, FHA, um, if those are kind of getting pushed away, well, do they have other means to maybe bring in the 20% down? And we've seen success doing that where, you know, maybe what we've done is a refinance, pulled some cash out, now allowed them to come in with 20% down, makes them a lot more competitive instead of, you know, some of the guidelines that you have to hit when you're, when you're trying to do a VA or an FHA loan too. Got it. And what we've found to be successful too is, you know, clients will come to us and say, well, I need to sell my house in order to buy. And right now what we're seeing in the market, you know, the climate that we're in is it's really hard to get an accepted contingent offer right now. So we're suggesting to clients, if you have money from 401k or somewhere else that you can pull from just in the interim to get that house accepted, you know, as soon as you get into escrow, you do the inspections on that house immediately we list your house and we've been successful probably um, a dozen times or more where we've done that, listed the current home and then sold that one, a little bit of a rent back maybe, but they've never had two payments at once. So we have been successful in that way. You know, it, it is a little bit of a risk. I would say in this market, I would feel confident giving you that advice. Um, if the market was different, I would be, you know, be real careful about giving that out, but that has been a way to make clients look stronger as well as to try and see, do they qualify for both payments? Is there any way to pull from somewhere else, you know, to be able to write non-contingent, even if their intention is to still sell that current residence? Yeah, that's perfect. Just some other ways to try and get creative in this interesting market we're in. Okay, so we'll go ahead and wrap up. Can you tell us a little bit about kind of how you work and maybe what sets you apart? What are your values and kind of how you serve your clients? And then also how people can get in touch with you. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I would say, you know, just the thing that sets sets me apart from others is um, started in this industry. I've been doing it over 20 years. Uh, so I've seen every level that, that you could go through. But I think that the biggest thing that I look at is um, you could talk to a lot of my clients, things like that is, you know, my honesty, my integrity, uh, the communication, whether it be with the agents 
title companies, clients, that is key. Without communication, you have nothing. And so I really value that uh, when I have a client, I'm not just looking at that client as being a, a, a number and, and, okay, well, there was a deal done. I'm looking at, I want to build a client for life. When I work with real estate agents, I want to work with real estate agents for life. I don't just want to be that one and done and move on. Um, I'm looking at trying to give great service, be that source that somebody, hey, if you need advice or, hey, we're thinking about maybe refinance, does it make sense to do that? Or we're thinking about selling and buying, does it make sense to do that? And so I, I want to be that advisor, not just the person that's going to take a, an order taker, I guess is the easiest way to say. Um, so communication is is very huge for me. Awesome. Yeah. And I would say, yeah, you're great at that. And just, it's so true in this business. Like, yeah, you don't just want to be an order taker or you want to be, you're more of a consultant too. So, you know, you're consulting them on different scenarios and you're willing to take the time to walk them through that process. And so when I give out your name, I tell people like, he's more, he's going to be willing to walk you through things and talk with you through it and things like that. And we just appreciate you taking care of our clients. So how can people contact you? What's the best way to find you on social media and all those different things? Best way really to uh, contact me is my cell phone. Uh, I'm kind of old school, still have uh, that on my side all the time. Uh, and that, that number is 916-872-0040. And uh, that's on me all the time. Uh, you and I were talking a little bit earlier and um, sometimes later at night, I still will answer it as long as I'm not asleep then I'm, it, it's go time. So <laughs> you can get a hold of me there or uh, email too is great. My office email is jmoaning at cmgfi.com. Awesome. Well, thank you for being here with me today. And um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments or you can reach out to Jeff or myself directly. And um, we'll see you guys again next time. Thanks for being here, Jeff. All right. Thank you very much. Bye.